So um, the learning objectives for chapter 11, chapter 11 is ba basically about saving graphs using our, our studio interface um, and different ways to do that. Um, and the learning objectives for this, uh, for saving graphs. Um, um, so by the end of this um, presentation or for chapter 11, you will have the ability to save graphs using our studio. Um, using the following methods. So um, our studio via menus, graphs using just code, file formats, and external editing. Important note, graphs can be saved in our studio using either our studio interface or just using code. Okay, so I'll go to the next page. Um, I don't know why I had that. Um, so our studio via menus. Um, to save a graph using the RStudio menus, um, you go to the plots tab and then choose export. So um, actually I feel more comfortable using this. Um, so um, here um, you can see um, an example um, image. This is actually from the book. Um, that they're showing that you just um, go to plots, export, and then um, and then you choose export, export, and then um, you can easily uh, and then you can save the image or save save the image is basically like the graph. Um, pretty simple. Um, so and actually, I think I'd rather just use this. Okay, so graphs using just code. Um, any ggplot graph can be saved as an object. Um, so you can use ggsave, the ggsave function um, to save the graph to a disk. And then any ggplot to graph can be saved as an, uh, uh, as an object, just letting you know. I can't believe I put that twice. Um, so um, as you can see the code here, um, I'm going to copy and actually I'm going to go to my, I'll just go up here. Oh. Do you have any questions okay. by the way so far? Yeah, I was just going to say um, from the viewer, because you're yeah. in dark mode, you can't really see some of the text. Like at least really? from my end on the screen. Like I can really? see it in the the actual RMD, but from the viewer part, like the dark blue text against the black background, um, it's hard to see. Okay, crap. Here, let me um um yeah. Actually, if you highlight it, I can see it, but it looks like I can see it if you highlight it. Um or if you go here. by the okay, next. uh yeah, I, I that, yeah. It. yeah. Okay. Okay, yeah. Sorry, girl. Okay, there. No, so um and then notes about this, um, the graph will be saved in the format defined by the file extension, PNG and the example above. Common formats are, of course, PDF, JPEG. Apparently there's one called TIFF. <laughs> um, PNG, SFG, and um, WMP, MF. So this is just basic. Um, and then file formats. And this one was actually, um an image from the book that I had tried to um knit into the presentation. Um so it just shows like the different formats that um the graphs can be saved in um using R. Can you see it? Yeah, it's a little better, but it's good. So I can see it. Yeah, sorry. This is really um half past time. <laughs> um so, or it was hard to do because it, it's it's a really short chapter and it's pretty basic, or these two other chapters, file formats. Um so um graphs can be saved in several formats. So um these are like the more more popular choices, as I said in the previous slide, um, which you're probably familiar with. Um and um, so um, chapter 11, um, towards the end, 
uh, mentioned some terms that were new to me, for example, lossless, which um, it just basically means that um, it, it's um, a way that you can um, resize um, the graph without any fuzziness or pixelation. Um, so in, in other words, um, the other formats are lossy. Um, so um, important note, um, this is especially noticeable when small images are enlarged. So if you are creating gar graphs from web pages, the PNG format is recommended. Um, the JPEG and TIFF formats are usually reserved for photographs, um, which is good to know. The WMF format is usually recommended for graphs that will appear in Microsoft Word or PowerPoint documents. This is actually really helpful information towards the end here. And then um, important note, um, MS Office does not support PDF or SFG files, and the WMF format will rescale well. However, note that um, WMF files will lose any transparency settings that have been set. So if you want to continue editing the graph after saving it, um, you should use PDF or SFG format. I don't know if you knew that, but. No, I did not. This is all yeah, like super cool. Yeah, this, that's actually, yeah. It, uh, yeah. And then, so any questions? Yeah, it, it kind of Notes. makes sense because like, for example, like yeah. the image there, um, I'm not sure if it was like a, um, what do you call it, I guess? Um, PNG or uh, um, JPEG file, but like it explains the idea that why images get pixel pixelated if you like blow up a small image and stuff like that. So yeah, yes. that's interesting. And I've never, I actually never heard of a WMF file before. Me neither. So, or a TIFF file? Yeah. That's like my I nickname. I've heard of a TIFF. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have heard of funny? a TIFF file. <laughs> You have? I don't use it as much. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's not one that's used as much, I think. But yeah, yeah. this is cool. Okay, cool. Keep yeah, going. so yeah. and so basically, um, they describe the PDF and SFG, SFG and WMF formats as lossless. So meaning that they resize without fuzziness or pixelation. So if you save like your graph in those formats, um, they will automatically be resized without fuzziness or pixelation. Um, losslessness. Have you heard of that term by chance? Or do you have any um, no. thoughts of, about that? No, no, that okay. was, this is all completely new, but so like really good information to know for sure. Okay, good. Yeah. I mean, this chapter is very short, so it was very hard to find. <laughs> and then, um, External editing is the last portion. Um, so sometimes it's difficult. Actually, I might as well just. Um, OK, so. Um, Yeah, external editing. So sometimes it's difficult to get a graph um, um, just right. Um, and most magazines and newspapers print an, an electronic fine-tuned graphs after um, they have been created. Okay. So the change in... So the external editing future... Um, Changes like fonts, moves labels, um, adds callouts, change, changes colors, and additional images or logos, um, etc. Um, if you save a graph in SFG or PDF format, you can use a vector graphics editing Pragmato to modify it um, using point and click tools. Um, two popular vector graphics editors are Illustrator and Inkscape. Not sure if you've heard of those. Um, Inkscape is an open source application that can be freely downloaded for the Mac OS, Windows, and Linux. Open the graph file in Inkscape, edit it to suit your needs, and save it um, in the format desired. So that's what I happened here. Um, it's a bar chart using Inkscape. Yeah. 
I was just putting an editor, but I, um, yeah. not an editor <laughs> in the chat. So I think there's also Figma. It's a newer one that people use oh. to do that. But yeah, I've heard of Illustrator, but never um, in Inkscape. So this is interesting. I yeah. haven't actually heard of any of these, to be honest. Um, so this was quite new, but cool. I love making graphs. Um, <laughs> uh, but I'll have to check out Sigma. Um, definitely. Yeah. Like, is that what you use? No, I actually don't use anything. But like, I, I need to start it, using. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, um, I mean, this is a bar chart mm -hmm. using. Um, oh wait, let me just go down again. Um, uh, So um, yeah, a bar chart, I think this is the one that is um, showing, um, this is the this is a bar chart using Inkscape, um, showing like different auto classes, like cars. Um, but I, it's actually kind of hard to, I mean, I don't know about you, but I'm not a really big fan of how this is presented. You know, it's not yeah. very clear. Um, so I think the, the chart itself is a ggplot chart, but then they have yeah. it in Inkscape, and within Inkscape, you can do other, like, editing to the image itself. Um, yeah. yeah. And so I think it's mostly just showing what Inkscape looks like versus, like, making the bar chart. But, um, yeah, so I know, like, I forgot. Yeah, so basically, like, some magazines, for example, I think it's, Either is it the time, New York Times or someone, like they can, or maybe BBC, like they'll make their charts using ggplot, but then do some fine tuning um, in like some sort of external editor like this before it goes in the magazine or like, like newspaper yeah, or something. Yeah. That's really interesting. Thank you. Okay. That was it for chapter 11, which is insane. Um, I don't know what all this other stuff is. Okay. So chapter 12 is actually more of my interest. <laughs> um, interactive graphs. Woo. Um, so basically the learning objectives for this chapter are to create interactive graphs using RStudio with the following packages. And I know I didn't really like do this correctly. <laughs> Leaf using the following packages, Leaflet, plot, Plotly, Reboke, and R charts. I'm not sure if you've used any of those. Those were all new to me. Um, Briefly, Leaflet and Plotly, but not like a lot, but yeah. Yeah, very interesting. Okay, um, so Leaflet. What is Leaflet? Oh, so Leaflet is a JavaScript library for interactive maps. Um, leaflet package can be used to generate Leaflet graphs and use it in R. So below um, is an example. Um, which shows the following. So um, actually it's using leaflet package. Um, and you'll see that when I click on the pin, it's actually um, the map. First, let me do this. So um, when I click on the pin, I will be able to see that Waldo is not located in the location um, of the pin and the pin is shown as birth as the birth place of quantitative wisdom. So the cool thing about this interactive graphs is you can actually um, move it the graph around and interact with it. As you can see here, isn't that cool? Um, not sure if you're seeing it, <laughs> but um, oh, no, I saw it. to do it. Um, but yeah, so this is just basically how to create a basic leaflet graph. Um, of course, live, you, you, if you don't have the package, you need to install it and then library leaflet, um, add tiles, um, add markers if necessary. Um, and um, of course, um,
Um, do you have any questions about this? Um, not right now, but yeah, it was very cool. Can I see the code again? Yes. Yeah, so with the leaflet package. Yeah, so this is cool. We did this briefly for like my data viz class. And like it okay. actually, yeah, like if you see in the ad markers, it's putting in the latitude and longitude. Yeah, and latitude and longitude. With the pop up and looks, yeah, very cool. It is very cool. You know, um, I just like how you can interact with this. Um, I can see why people use R. Okay, anyway. <laughs> um, so Plotly. Um, I don't know if you've used Plotly. What is Plotly? Plotly is both a commercial service and open source product for creating high and interactive um, visualizations. So the Plotly package allows you to create Plotly interactive graphs from within R. In addition, any ggplot2 graph can be turned into a Plotly graph. This is actually an important note. Um, using, um, okay, so this is using fuel economy data. Um, I created a interactive graph displaying highway mileage versus engine displace um, by car class. Um, steps taken to create the interactive graph um, are as follows. Um, mousing over a point displays information about that point. Okay, clicking the legend point removes that class from the plot and then clicking on it again returns it. So I just like, was writing notes as to how I did it, but okay. This is the code. Crap. Um, if you want to look at it, are you able to see it clearly? Yeah. yeah. Um, so like, it's cool that you can use ggplot. Um, uh, or that a ggplot graph can be turned into a poly graph. That's the cool thing. So of course, yeah, in the code, but... you can see, yeah, sorry. Oh, no, go ahead. I was just going to talk about the code, but go ahead. Um, yeah, no, I just thought it was cool that a ggplot um, graph could be turned into um, a poly graph. Um, as described in the yeah. code, you know? Yeah, because it looks like they created the graph object P, and then they put that in the ggplot, ggplotly um, yeah. function, and then, function yeah. and then, so this yeah. one, oh, that's this nice. is very interesting, yeah, ggplotly, it's kind of like combining the two, um, but yeah, so it's label, but the, it's interesting because the code, oh crap, it's gonna go back. Um, you're right. This was probably not the best background to use for the code, um, but um, yeah. So P is is um, being identified as plotly graph, basically as a function. Yeah, ggplot, and then it's basically using the same uh, code that I would use if I were to plot a graph using ggplot in between. It's almost like it's like using um, both, it's like turning ggplot into, it literally is turning a gg, ggplot, like it's turning ggplot two into like a combination of ggplot and plotly. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. It's like kind of interesting to me. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. So like if you click on the point, I think it's like if you click on the point, it'll, um... I don't know exactly. Yeah, so it shows you the information about it. And also, I think, like, if you created a square, like, say you clicked and created a square, it'll, like, um, show you, um, just kind of zoom in. Yeah. So it's pretty cool. Yeah. That's cool, right? Yeah. Isn't it cool? Okay, cool. Um, yeah, that one was very interesting. Um, honestly, Lydia, though, and our audience, 
it, this is also, I would not, I mean, I think it's cool and colorful, but this is not how I like to um, present data when I'm trying to visualize it. I like it to be clear, you know? Like this just looks, and I don't know if this is clear to you, but yeah, I usually don't like to use this method. Um, I don't know what you yeah. think. It, it's just not as clear, you know, for me. Um, yeah, I don't know if it's clear for itself, you. It has a lot going on. Yeah, I think the graph itself, they need to like do some um, like editing or customization. Like if they yeah. add transparency, because like it looks like a lot of the dots are overlapping, so you can't yeah. see, or rather the points are overlapping, so you kind of can't see the distinction. But yeah. it would be something they would have to do within the GD plot. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, it's not the prettiest, but just in general, at least seeing this the functionality. Yeah. Yeah, seeing the functionality and and the interactive piece helps. You know, I think that that really. So. I don't know if you've used this package, Reboke, is that how you pronounce it, I guess? Um, I've never heard of it <laughs> either. Um, so um, this is the code that I use to create a Reboke graph um, or our Boke graph. Um, have you heard of this package, Lydia, by chance? I don't think I've used this before. Maybe okay. I have, but I'm like totally forgetting it, but it does not, like, I feel like I've seen the name, but I don't think I've actually made anything using it. I've never seen this one in my life either. Um, so this is using Matt Carr's, MT Carr's data. Um, to, um, And actually, let me just make sure, um, let me go back to this because I'm just confused now. Um, not that. Um, it's here. Um, So I guess like that graph is is showing um, engine displaced versus miles per gallon by number of engines, by the number of engine cylinders. I was over and try the various control to the right of the image. Um, yeah, and the, honestly, Lydia, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not a big fan of the the choices that they 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 put for the book the examples I kind of wish I made my own and I don't know what you think about this but <clears throat> this Sorry. this it's just not very clear to me you know yeah, yeah it looks kind of similar to the like not necessarily the graph but like the functionality looks kind of similar to what they did in Botley. Yeah, um, yeah. that's exactly, yeah. Um, okay, our charts is the last section. So, um, it's basically creating an interactive bar chart. And this is actually the one that didn't run correctly. So, um, and I have no idea why it didn't or what this stuff is, but it's supposed to look like this. Is anything? Oh. Um, not there, crap. It's supposed to look like this. Um.
Oh, it might be better to go directly from the book online. Then you'll be able to see the interactivity. Yeah. For some reason, I've been having issues getting the book online. You know, but... Um, do you think I could go to my GitHub and from that thing or... What I've been doing is I've just been going to this. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is the one that I had issues uh, making. Um, And it frustrates, frustrates me that I was unable to um, um, figure it out, but maybe we can look over it together at some point to figure out how to run yeah. it correctly, you know? Yeah, um, I didn't get to try out the code either, but yeah, because yeah, we were no. working on it and it was, I don't know, we'll figure it out. <laughs> we'll figure it out at yeah. some point. Yeah, that's that's how it is when you're using a new program. Okay. Um, Okay, and then high charter um, is the last one. And um, so the high charter package provides access to high charts, JavaScript graphics library. Um, so the library is free for non commercial use. Example below. So let's use, um, so basically, um, this code is using. Um, High chart, high charter, the high charter package. I'm not sure if you've heard of it. Um, to create an interactive line chart displaying life expense expectancy over time for several Asian countries. So this is actually more up my alley. The data comes from um, Gapminder, a Gapminder data set. Um, so this is actually cool. This is how I would, um, what I like to see. Um, so it's just like the life expense expectancy of each um, country. I think I remember um, coming to the conclusion that, and it's cool because you can even see Cambodia, this life expectancy, you know, kind of like plummeted at some point and then um, increased. But most of them, I mean, all of the countries are steadily increasing you know, the life expectancy. Yeah, I think I, I remember in one of the other chapters, they did discuss like the life expectancy in like Cambodia dipping. I think it might've been in the time series one, but yeah, it's pretty interesting to see, but yeah, there's that. Yeah, because my roommate, like my Cambodian. former roommate's parents are Cambodian. So they're actually Canadian, but like, um, so her parents are from Cambodia. So it's very interesting to see. I wonder if this is, do you think these are accurate? I think they're accurate. Gap finder is like apparently where they got the data, but um, Afghanistan. Let me just see. So it seems like China has the highest life expectancy. I think there's one above it by rain, right above China. It's kind of dark, but if you go a little above China, there should be another one. Yeah. But it's China. Oh, you're right. You're right. Yeah, you're right, Brian. But see, and it's very clear. Um, I like this kind of um, interactive graph. Um, so um, like all of the interactive graphs in this chapter, um, there are options that allow um, graphs to be customized. And so this is an example life expectancy by color, by, by country, sorry. 
That's again from 1952 to 2007. Um, and maybe I like this maybe I liked this section because of, um, since I'm in public health, I work with, I'm, I'm more so trying to visualize life, you know, like life expectancy, populate, you know, populations, yeah. not really like caring about, um, I'm not sure what you'll do at Intel, but like, I'm not really interested in like analyzing any other data. <laughs> so, um, uh yeah so this is actually so let me just go back up here so this is just like a customized um version of um the same the same uh graph and do you want to see the code sure yeah i was just looking it over in the book too it's actually really hard um maybe you can coach me for like my for presenting at a later date it's really hard for me to like present codes, you know, and data. It's so weird. <laughs> I had the same issue when I was presenting air quality data using SAS. Um, I think last semester or um, my second semester of my first year at NOLA. For some reason, it's like it's it just takes practice. I think, you know. Oh. For sure. No, it does. Cause yeah, like if you go back and watch like my first presentation, like with RFDS, yeah. like it's totally different than from now. Cause yeah, like, yeah, when you're not used to, like not used to the code and then just also like the nerves of presenting on top of that. So yeah, it just takes practice, but yeah. But you did awesome. Like, yeah. Thanks girl. I mean, yeah, I really just keep doing it. Yeah. Hey, I'm so glad I didn't do the, um that other long chapter oh my god oh yeah, yeah. i didn't realize it was that long it was so long in the end but yeah yeah no you're a natural did you start so how long have you been presenting like that did you take a class so or I, something i might need to i mean i might need to because that point. i don't do a specific presenting class um but like with rfds i've been presenting since like September, September, October 2021, like as far okay. as like presenting code. And I mean, like I did presentations like since high school, I would say, or like back in high school, not so much in undergrad, but some for like recently for my program. But yeah, it just, it's like the more you do it, the better you get. Cause I think yeah. like with the Facebook club, I've probably presented four or five times 